We have been starting to pay closer attention to particular 2022 midterm races. We're following just to name a few the Florida gubernatorial race where potential 2024 presidential candidate Ron DeSantis is up for reelection as governor. We on Monday night had a live stream of in the Pennsylvania Senate. We first had the Democratic primary debate and then we had the Republican primary debate. The Republican primary debate is the one where Mehmet Oz, the um, uh, TV doctor, is running. We covered that and it was cringy and it was wacky in a lot of different ways. Another particularly disturbing race is the Arizona House race, wherein in the first Arizona congressional district, a guy named Ron Watkins is running. We've talked about Ron Watkins before. Uh, Ron Watkins is a, a roughly 35, 34 year old conspiracy theorist. He's the site administrator uh, administrator. And um, uh, I guess we I think he's the owner as well of the website 8KUN. This is formerly 8chan. And he has played a major role in spreading all sorts of far right QAnon conspiracy theories. He is now running in Arizona's first congressional district. He was in a debate last night hosted by Arizona State University and the local PBS station. And there is something about this guy that is cringeworthy and extraordinarily creepy. I don't know exactly what it is. I'm going to look at a couple of clips here with you. First, just a very strange moment from his opening statement where he kind of seems to lose his train of thought, but it's all just weird. And I will make sure that your rights are. Are kept. Thank you. <laughs> OK, so the ent <laughs> the entire thing got off to a very, very strange start. Now, then the question of Ukraine came up military aid to Ukraine. Ron Watkins tried to blame the Keystone XL pipeline for the invasion. And this um, uh, led to one of the other candidates, Representative Blackman, uh, to basically crush Watkins. And he crushed him so brutally that Watkins had no choice to go. Actually, I misspoke. My opponent is correct. This is fascinating. Check this out. Military aid to Ukraine. What do you think, Ron? I support military uh, aid to Ukraine, but I want to say that we would not even be in Ukraine if President Biden did not shut down the Keystone Pipeline on the first day. What? Because now that that's shut down, we have to get our oil and we're getting it from Russia and we're getting all these problems through the Ukraine. And that would not have happened if uh, Biden did not. So you see the Ukraine. So this is a word salad. This is of no. He is visibly struggling to use English to communicate substance, and he is failing. The, 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 the pipeline helped prompt Russia to invade Ukraine. <laughs> yes, sir. Because we've got all of this oil coming through from Russia to the United States, and they want the better routes to bring the oil through. Can I can I clarify? <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. That's not why they went into Ukraine. Ukraine. They went into Ukraine because Ukraine didn't want to be part of NATO. Listen, you're trying to be you're trying to work on a national stage, and you don't even know why the war started in Ukraine. <laughs> it had nothing to do with the Keystone Pipeline. The Keystone Pipeline caused the the inflation and the increase in our gas prices. Now that's the reason why that's also not true. That, that so they're both wrong. But but I mean this this is just bizarre. They went into Ukraine is because Russia wanted Ukraine as they had them pre World War II, and Ukraine wanted to be part of NATO. Respond, please. He's right. I made a mistake. Yeah, there you go. So, I mean, <laughs> listen, if there's anything to praise Ron Watkins for here, um, it's that he immediately said, yeah, what I just said is completely untrue. It's co it's absolutely and completely untrue. In another weird moment, Ron Watkins claimed that the biggest issue in uh, the Congress is, is it the first or second congressional district? Now I don't even remember. They, he said that the biggest issue is the border wall, even though this part of Arizona isn't actually near the border. And then he claims that he went to the border and scared coyotes away. Coyotes, not literal coyote. Actually, I think he means coyotes in terms of like people smugglers. I don't think he means literal coyotes, but let's listen. Biggest issue for this district is the border wall. The border wall was not completed and there are actually sections of it that were destroyed. And I went down to those sections and I asked the locals, how did this section of the border wall get destroyed? Right. And they told me that Biden sent the Army Corps of Engineers down there to destroy the border wall for flood for flood prevention issues. 
So I went down there and I saw with my own eyes, I saw the coyotes sitting right across the border. The coyotes looked me in the eyes and they ran away. Right. They were so scared when when uh, Ron Watkins went down there. So bizarre stuff. And lest anybody think that Ron Watkins is the only wacky candidate. Then the moderator asked Representative Walt Blackman about his history of wanting to uh, charge people, women seeking abortions and the doctors performing them with homicide. And he says he still supports that. So it's not only Ron Watkins that's off the rails. I read that you have said that you said abortion doctors and women who get abortions should be charged with homicide. Exactly. You know, that's already in our statute, the Arizona statute. If a person commits abortion or kills a baby while in the womb, it's under our criminal statute. I didn't make the law up. The law has already been there. What I did was codify that law. Now, going back and changing that and amending that, what I have done is allow women to be able to seek services, counseling service for what they need. Now, here's the deal. The black right. community so basically, he's willing not to charge women with murder if instead they go to one of these counseling services where the by the way, the term counselor is not a regulated term. It's not a therapist where they go to like a Christian counselor who talks you out of getting the abortion. There are more babies being aborted than born every day. Now, the problem that I see is that that is not part of the conversation. And if I have to do something to save the black community of babies being aborted in a record right. number, guess what? I'm going to do it. But we need to save all babies. When we have states like California and New York that are pushing late term abortion, that are pushing and fantasize and we stand and do. And remember, no, no one's pushing it nothing. It's time for us to take a stand for life. It's time for us to get on the side of God. And it's time for us to protect these children that are being murdered in the womb. Homicide at what level? How far did the pregnancy be when it's homicide? Conception? Conception. Conception. Yes, sir. Okay. Can, you, can you imagine homicide for a, you know, five week abortion? I mean, this is this is some people don't like this term. This is dark ages, uh, dark ages stuff. Um, OK, one more clip. The moderator asks or, or one two more clips. The moderator asks Ron Watkins, how would you have reacted as a congressman on the day of the Trump riots? We'll start with you. How would you have reacted as a congressman on January 6th? On January 6th, as a congressman, I would have texted President Trump and told him, please call this off because it got out of hand pretty quickly. Do you think he had the power to do that? He did call it off. But it, it took a while to do so. If he had the power to call it off, do you think he had the power to call it on? I don't know. Uh, so he had invited all these people out there. And surely uh, there must have been some kind of intel going on. But I, I, don't, I don't know. It was meant to be a peaceful uh, protest. And there were some mm. people that got in there and did some bad things. And those people should be prosecuted, the ones that did the bad things. But right. for the majority of the people that were there, 99.99%. It was a peaceful protest and there was no issue. So 99.99% of the people that we saw on television storming the U.S. Capitol, walking the halls, defacing the Capitol, these were... Well, I just told you that the, there were people doing bad things and there were millions of people there and there was just a few people that millions? were... Millions? I've seen... Oh, uh, yeah. The people things. at that, at that uh, rally and at, in, at the Capitol? Millions? Yes, sir. Yeah, there were not millions of people there, as of course we all know. Um, and then lastly here, Ron Watkins actually asked about his relationship to QAnon. He just denies the entire thing. Ron, some people say that uh, a lot of this was stoked by QAnon. What is your relationship with QAnon? I have no relationship with QAnon. None at all? None at all. Um, the reports are that your bulletin board sites hosted postings that launched, launched uh, QAnon conspiracy. So I ran a free speech website and I was the administrator. And there were many thousands, thousands of people that posted on those sites. Uh, Q was just one of those, and I do not know who it was, and I'm not that person. Yeah, and of course, he spent months and months and months parroting QAnon stuff in a cringeworthy fashion. So the closer we look at a lot of these individual races, it's all bad choices. It's bad and then worse. And unfortunately, a lot of these people may end up winning in November. We'll have these clips on our Instagram at David Pakman show who though for those who are gluttons for punishment and want to take a look at them. One of our sponsors is Cheese Butter, giving you 20% off. Cheese Butter is a delicious gourmet cheese melt that ingeniously blends four indulgent cheeses and artisanal seasoned butter. I love this stuff. Cheese Butter is the type of thing you've got to try to really understand. There are so many different things I was already putting cheese and butter on. 
But by combining top shelf cheeses and butters together, cheese butter unlocks a new level of tasty gourmet goodness. And there are actually several cuisines with sauces that mix these ingredients. It may be new to you, but it is a tried and true combination. Very often cheese butter will make an appearance when I'm cooking at home. I put it on French and sourdough bread, bagels, English muffins. It's great on sandwiches, grilled cheese, burgers, baked potatoes, mac and cheese, broccoli, broccolini, my beloved broccolini, other vegetables. I'm sure there's lots of other home chefs in the audience who can come up with some great ways to use cheese butter. And you'll now get 20% off when you go to cheesebutter.com slash Pacman. The link is down below.